My name is Dr. Kim Eagle. I'm one of the directors of the Frankel Cardiovascular Center at the University of Michigan. I'm really happy to be the chair of the Gentac Alliance, which is now uh, powered by the Marfan Foundation. And I'm on the advisory board for their board of directors. Also, I work for the American College of Cardiology as the editor of their website called acc.org. And in that role, I'm very involved with looking at all the literature coming out about COVID-19, assessing its credibility, and then we create bite-sized chunks of that information for the cardiovascular team care members around the world who are uh, thinking about and managing patients with uh, COVID-19. People have asked me whether or not the COVID vaccine is recommended for individuals who have genetic uh, conditions like Marfan syndrome, Lois Dietz, uh, uh, vascular EDS, and others. And the answer to the question is yes. We believe that they benefit equally to the general population uh, from receiving uh, the COVID-related vaccines. Currently, uh, our recommendations are that uh, an individual should get whichever vaccine is available first in their community. There's no specific vaccine that was developed for individuals with uh, genetic conditions, but it appears that all of the vaccines are highly effective in reducing one's risk of developing COVID-19 infection. Many of my patients with genetic conditions like Marfan syndrome, Lois Dietz, have asked whether or not the COVID vaccines are safe? And the answer is yes. Uh, these vaccines, the three that are available in our country, for example, have been studied in 100,000 patients. So we know that they're safe. And thankfully, they're also incredibly effective. If you look at the side effect profile of individuals getting COVID-19 vaccines, they appear to be relatively minor. Some individuals will have discomfort in the arm, occasionally feel a little fluish for a day or so, uh, but those side effects generally are minimal and they appear to be the same in patients who have genetic aortic conditions as, as the general population. Many patients are asking whether or not the vaccine provides immunity for a year, two years, uh, et cetera. Good question. So far, the studies suggest that there is outstanding immunity provided for at least six to nine months after the vaccine. Currently, both uh, Moderna and Pfizer, who have developed the mRNA vaccines, are planning to offer booster shots in the fall with the possibility that the immunity could tail off uh, as one gets closer to, uh, say, nine months to a year but uh, at least six to nine months, the immunity appears to be very robust. I get asked all the time if there were specific vaccine trials in patients with Marfan syndrome, Lois Dietz, Feds. The answer to that is no. Um, individuals with these conditions were represented in the vaccine trials, and the NIH has done a survey of individuals with rare conditions to find out about their experiences, both with COVID infection, but also with the vaccines. And so far, they appear to be similar to individuals of the same age and gender. I'm delighted that recently Pfizer announced the, the results of studies in uh, children aged 12 through 15. Remember, prior to that, uh, we, were, we were vaccinating individuals uh, 16 and up. So now we have evidence, uh, good evidence of both the safety and the effectiveness of the vaccine in children down to age 12. The next, uh, the next studies, which will probably come out within a month or perhaps six weeks will be kids nine to 12 and then six to nine and then age two through six. So I think through the summer, we will see further evidence from the vaccine trials of both the effectiveness and safety of the vaccine in children. And we believe that this is very important for uh, achieving immunity in our population and stopping the spread of the virus. At this point in time, uh, we don't know whether or not there are any specific types 
of problems with the vaccine in children who have Marfan syndrome, Lois Dietz, or VEDS. My impression from what I've seen is that, that the vaccines are safe and that they're effective. Uh, and I would, I would recommend them for all children unless they have an immune disorder or some of the uh, items that essentially caused them to be excluded from the vaccine trials. Uh, individuals with Marfan syndrome, Lois Dietz, or uh, vascular EDS do not appear to be uh, more at risk for acquiring uh, COVID-19 than the general population. Some of my patients have asked whether or not they're more at risk to having complications uh, if they get COVID-19, talking about individuals with, uh, say, Marfan syndrome, Lois Dietz, vascular EDS. The answer is, for the most part, no. Um, there are individuals who uh, have, their, their disease has affected their lungs, for example, and they have reduced respiratory capacity. They would be at higher risk to have a more serious form of the infection. Or if they had valvular heart disease that had led to uh, congestive heart failure, then they would be at a higher risk for developing cardiovascular compromise during COVID-19. But for most individuals who have not had a severe infection, I'm, I'm sorry, severe disease affecting their lungs, their heart, et cetera, their risk of developing severe complications would be similar to the general population. The National Institutes of Health has done a survey to try to ask the question whether or not individuals with uh, rare genetic conditions are more likely to have complications when they do get COVID-19. Uh, and that survey did, did not suggest that patients with Marfan syndrome, uh, vascular EDS, Lois Dietz, had a higher rate of significant complications compared to the general community. I, I'm fortunate to have a, a, a practice that um, has a lot of patients with genetic aortic conditions in it. And I follow a lot of individuals and families with uh, these uh, disorders. And I'm thankful that, that actually none of them have had a serious complication from COVID-19, even though uh, a, a fairly large number of them have uh, ended up getting infected with the virus when the surge was on here in Michigan. First of all, it varies by geography but it, it has to do with the vaccination rate in the population. And so if we can achieve uh, vaccination rates that are in that 70% or higher range, the ability of the virus to spread asymptomatically among us goes way, way down. And then we can really start to return toward what we consider to be more of a normal life. Until we get to vaccination rates in that range, I think we need to continue to be vigilant especially given the fact that some of these new variants spread more quickly in asymptomatic populations. So I'd like to, I'd like to just leave uh, our audience with some final thoughts. Uh, and I'm, I'm talking specifically to individuals who have Marfan syndrome, Lois Dietz, uh, vascular EDS. So far, the data would suggest that you are no more likely than the general population for your age and gender to get COVID-19. Second, uh, you are no more likely on average to have a severe complication from the virus, unless, as I said, there was unusual lung disease or uh, valvular heart disease, for example. Third, studies would suggest that the vaccine is equally safe and effective in your situation. So I am really encouraging all of my patients to get the vaccine and to make sure their family members are vaccinated so that we can get to this high threshold of vaccination to really stop the virus from spreading in our community.